Guys, what's up? Um, so today I'm just going to do a little maintenance job on my micro. Um, it's something that's pretty look, looked over a lot of the time. Um, I got, I've actually bought a micro really cheap. I bought one for about 80 quid years ago um, because it wouldn't run and it was because the distributor cap had um, worn, like corroded and basically there was no spark getting to the plugs. Um, and it cost me about eight quid to fix it. <laughs> there was absolutely nothing wrong with the rest of the micro, so I got a dead cheap car there um, for such a simple problem. So um, as you can see, the micro is there. I'll um, I'll just flip the camera around now and show you exactly what I'm changing and what I'm doing. So this is um, what I'm doing. This is the distributor cap. Um, bear in mind this this. Um, this car probably hasn't had this change in the whole time it's had it. It's on our edge, so 97, I think, something like that. So over 10, uh, over like 20 years, it's probably never had a distributor cap on it. So um, basically what happens is these little metal points in here, uh, let me focus on that. Yeah, the metal points there, they corrode and basically it just stops the spark getting through to the HT leads. So then you just um, don't get any fire on the, the like you get no voltage to the plugs and then they don't fire um, and then it doesn't run or it'll misfire if if just one of them's gone um, so um, it's it's really overlooked when servicing um, a lot of people don't bother changing them until they're broke but it's one of those things I've always just changed them before they break it's just less hassle than being broken down in the middle of somewhere or you can actually get them running again and you can like scrape the corrosion off sometimes and it'll start running again um, but I just thought, what's the point? Let's just change it before it breaks for the price of it. Um, I got it from Euro Car Parts, so um, it wasn't very much. It was I, I can't remember how much it was off the top of my head, but they do them at Euro Car Parts if you need them. They come with the new, new bolts as well. And then the other thing I'm changing while I've got it off as well is the rotor arm. So this bit basically spins around in the inside of that distributor cap. And then as it goes past those little points, it distributes a spark to each each of the points. Um, so, yeah, that's how that works, it, basically. I won't go into too in-depth. Um, but, yeah, on this one, it actually tells you which cylinder it goes to. So that'll be cylinder one, two, four, three. Um, but some of them don't have that. So just when you take them apart, um, just bear in mind which wires come off sometimes it's better to just um, so this is what this is it on the car so at right hand side of the engine um, and I think it, these are I think these are six or seven mil um, headed bolts um, but they'll probably be different if you if your cars had one before sometimes they come with different size bolts so um, just yeah figure it out yourself and um, there's one there one there and there is one right underneath as well like I can't you can't see it with the camera but there is one right underneath um, sometimes it's better to just take the cap off with the wires with the HT leads still attached and just rest it to one side get your new one on and then just take each wire off individually and put it back to where it was um, which is probably what I'll do now and then I'll, if I do it that way I'll show, it'll be easier to show you how to do it properly if, you, if your cap's not marked. Um, so I'll crack on with that now. that's the cap off um, it probably would make it a little bit easier if you just took the relay box out from there I think it's just a 10 mil um, 10 mil bolt there and then a little clip holding it on down the back and then that'll pull up and just move out your way it'll make it a bit easier to get to that bottom bolt um, my bolts were actually five and a half mil and I didn't have a five and a half mil socket um, which is quite annoying because um, it's such a weird size and I think they're the standard bolt sizes so um, 
yours might be a five and a half mil as well. Um, but if you don't have a five and a half mil, uh, you can see the Imperial socket 732. I don't even know how you pronounce that 732. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, that works as well. Um, the six didn't six mil didn't quite grab it, so yeah, just use your Imperial socket. That'll get it off. Um, so now that we've got the cap off, I'll show you inside it. Um, as you can see, all that white horrible stuff on there is it starting to corrode? Um, especially that that one there. That's um, quite bad. Um, but yeah, that that wouldn't have lasted much longer, to be honest. I don't think. Um, I think that's been on there for a while. Um, as you can see, there's all like the shards of metal everywhere as well from it um, burning out. Um, so now all we need to do is get this rotor arm off. As you can see, the screw's there, but this big mound of plastic is in the way, so you can't get the screwdriver in straight. So what I'm going to do is just flick it over on the key, and that'll just spin the distributor around a little bit so that I can get the screwdriver down in nice and straight, just to reduce my chance of um, stripping the, the screw or anything like that. So um, I'll do that now. And um, so if we just grab the keys. Take it out of gear, and then it is literally just a flick of the key. It won't start because obviously there's no spark now. So, and then if we just go around, see where that's moved it to. So it's moved it too far. It's gone all the way around. So we just keep flicking it until it's in a good place. So. Uh, yeah, right on totally the wrong side now. Um, we just keep going until it gets in the right place. It's a lot easier when you've not when you've got another person, so you can just see what you've done. Uh, so it's around about the same place it started now. So just give another quick flick. Um, okay, yeah, it's right. It's in the wrong place still. <laughs> Tiny flick, it should be right. Ah, oh, it stopped right in the wrong place again. <laughs> it's so annoying. There we go. So I can get down straight at that now. Um, so if I get, a, it's probably easier with a cross-headed screwdriver. And then if you strip it, you can always try the flat. Then, um, so we'll try the cross-headed screwdriver first, and then um, hopefully it should just get it out. So, um, that's that's the old rotor arm. Um, as you can see, it's looking a bit worse for wear around the end. This is the contact point here. So, um, that's that's where it makes coin contact with all your points inside your distributor cap um, and then this this bit here is where the main um, lead goes to basically and that connects um, so that basically what that does is that point there the circle in the middle makes contact with that one and then basically it spins around here and then when it reaches um, a point like this the spark will connect and then that'll send um, voltage through that HT lead to the to that spark plug for that to fire that cylinder um, and it spins around and it just does it does that and it just sends spark to each one as it goes around um, and basically if the if that if that ends worn out too much that's not too bad really but if that's worn out too much all these points are all corroded like like I showed you before on that one, if, if they get really bad, they'll just stop making a connection and then they'll, you'll get no spark to that cylinder. So um, this is a new one. As you can see, it looks... Um, let's try and get this focus there. It looks a lot better, that one. There's um, not as much decay and damage. Um, 
or well, there isn't any because it's brand new but the, um, yeah so what I'm going to do now is stick this one back on um, and it'll only go back on the same way you took it off as you screw only goes in one way um, so it'll only go, it'll only go back in the way where where the screw goes in um, the new one didn't come with a new screw so just make sure you don't lose the screw it's quite fiddly to get out so just be careful when you move getting it out that you don't lose it because um, it's just a faff so um, I'm gonna go stick this one back on now um, hopefully it's the right fitment it doesn't look the same but I might be wrong <laughs> back on as you can see screw back in in the same place um, if you try and twist it now if you've got it in right it won't move anywhere um, don't obviously don't push it too hard but just make sure the screws gone in properly it'll um, it'll it won't be able, you won't be able to turn it the the arm was right it just looked a little bit different um, and then the other thing to make sure as well before you put your cap back on there's a little um, I don't know if you can see it in there but there's a little rubber seal just make sure that's not popped out anywhere because um, if it does it'll let water in um, if it's not sealing properly so just make sure that's all in place before you put the cap back on um, so yeah I'll um what I'm gonna do now is just stick the cap back on I'll use the new use the new bolts because um, they're a better size as well and then um, yeah so we'll um, we'll chuck the cap back on now um, and then I'll show you what I do about swapping the leads over. So that's um, that's the cap back on. Um, it's all tightened down. Bottom one's a bit fiddly to get to. Um, I have, I've got limited tools here because all my tools are in my works van, so um, I didn't quite have the right tools to get to it properly. But it's um, I have managed to get it tightened up now. Um, so the best thing to do is you've still got all your HT leads um, attached to this one. Um, obviously mine are all marked and, and the leads are marked as well so it's dead easy but not all of them if they've had aftermarket leads on and stuff not all, they're not always marked and things so the best thing to do is get your cap in the same position right next to it so the flat flat edge at the top like this one and then just take them off individually um, and move them over one at a time and then you can't get them mixed up that way um, because if they're mixed up it won't run or it'll run and it'll it'll misfire um, so um, I'm going to do that now and um, yeah, and then we'll fire it up and make sure it's, it starts. So there you go, leads all swapped over, nice and easy, uh, just one at a time and it's, um, you can't make any mistakes then. Um, I will be putting aftermarket leads on as well um, later, that's why I've not bothered changing the leads at the same time, but if you're just using it as a daily and stuff, I definitely recommend just changing the leads while you're at it. Um, better luck at this cap now it's off, um, as you can see, that these in, inner bits aren't meant to be white, that's corrosion, um, they're meant to look like metal, like the top, if you can see the difference between the top and the sides. Um, but they're, yeah, they're pretty badly corroded. I don't think they would have lasted much longer, especially that one. If you look, I can probably s scrape bits off that one. Um, but yeah, that's, that one's pretty bad there. Um, and you can see all the dust and stuff inside. So um, I've probably changed that about the right time. Um, so we'll get, get rid of that one. And then, um, yeah, we'll start it up and make sure it starts. <laughs> So I should just fire straight up with a bit of luck. 
don't don't worry about my engine management lights because I took my key out while it, the key, the barrels fucked. So, so I walked off with a key. Um, yeah, so it runs absolutely fine. Um, yeah, hopefully if I do that, the light will go off now. No, I'm probably gonna have to unhook the battery. I walked off with the key. It's got nats, you see, so it th it thinks that um, it thinks that I've stolen it. Um, but yeah, it runs absolutely fine. Um, if the if you try it and you've got any questions, just drop them in the comments below. Um, hopefully, it's helped you. Um, it's definitely worth a thing worth. Um, Definitely a thing worth changing before it breaks, rather than wait until till it breaks. Um, especially for the price of it, I, I can't remember how much it was off the top of my head, but I'm sure it was like less than twenty quid. Um, it's definitely one. Th it's if you've just bought the car, I'd I'd just change it, and then you probably don't have to worry about it for the rest of the time you own the car. Um, but yeah, that's it. Hopefully, it's helped you out, and uh, catch you in the next episode. Peace out.